In this recording, we look at an example of transposition, that is, rearranging a formula for a particular letter, in the case where the required letter appears in both the numerator and the denominator of an expression on one side of the equation. And in this example, we're going to consider the case where, in working with this, the required letter only appears to the power of 1 and we might also possibly have other letters and constants. In future recording, we'll then look at what happens when it then involves a letter being to the power of 2 or higher. For now then, let's consider this simpler example, where it is just to the power of 1, by looking at the following example. Making x the subject of the formula 5x plus 3y divided by 2x minus y is equal to 2y. So what should we do here? Well, when it appears in the denominator, it is good to start by multiplying both sides of the equation by the full expression on the denominator, 2x minus y in this case, as that will make it easier to deal with. So in this case, doing that will cancel 2x minus y from the left leaving 5x plus 3y on the left hand side and on the right hand side it becomes 2y times 2x minus y and make sure you put the brackets around that full denominator expression to avoid ambiguities or errors in calculation later on. The next step is we're wanting to find x but we still have two terms involving x and they're on different sides of the equation. Furthermore, one of those expressions, the x is trapped inside these brackets. So let's start off by expanding the expression on the right hand side. So the left hand side is still the same for now, 5x plus 3y. Expanding those brackets on the right, 2y times 2x will become 4xy, 2y times negative y that gives us minus 2y squared. The next step then is we want to group all terms involving the required unknown which is x on one side of the equation usually most conventional and convenient to group it on the left and all other terms that don't involve that unknown will go on the right in a case like this. Therefore we have 5x that's already on the left but we also have this 4xy. So we subtract 4xy from both sides, which will then give us 5x minus 4xy on the left. We still also have a plus 3y on the left, so we subtract that from both sides to cancel that from the left and to put minus 3y on the right hand side of the equation so that we now have 5x minus 4xy equals negative 3y minus 2y squared. So that is looking a fair bit better. At least now all of our terms involving the required unknown x are on the one side and everything else is on the other side of the equation. The next step is to take x out as a common factor here. So we have x times 5 minus 4y on the left and on the right we still have negative 3y minus 2y squared in this example. Now our required unknown x is multiplied by the factor 5 minus 4y. So if we divide both sides of the equation by 5 minus 4y, that will cancel it from the left and leave us with what we require, which is x as the subject of the formula. That is, dividing both sides by 5 minus 4y, we get x equals minus 3y minus 2y squared divided by 5 minus 4y. So that's an example where all expressions involving x had it to the same power, namely to the power of 1, 
we'll look at what to do when we end up with a quadratic expression with x squared as well as x to the power of 1 in a subsequent recording. So you might also want to check that.